everyone and welcome to my lecture on Laplace transform tables. In this tutorial, I will talk about table of pairs and table of properties. If you haven't watched my tutorial on golden rules to find region of convergence or rock, please watch it before continuing this lecture as, as it's very relevant. Let's start with the table of pairs. The Laplace transform of impulse function is 1 and the rock is everywhere. The Laplace transform of u of t is 1 over s and here is the rock. The Laplace transform of minus u minus t is again 1 over s, but the rock is different. Laplace transform of e to the power of minus a t u t is 1 over s plus a, and here is the rock. Laplace transform of minus e minus a t u minus t is also similar to the previous one, but the rock is different. Next signal is cosine omega naught t u t where omega naught is a constant frequency. Here's the Laplace transform on rock. Last signal is sinusoidal multiplied by ut, and here's the Laplace transform and corresponding rock. If you look at the reference books, you probably see a longer table, but I just include the building blocks. You're all set if you understand this table, and please don't memorize none of this. It's super easy to find Laplace transform on rock, even if you don't have a table. Let's go through the table and practice together. The first signal is delta function. Here's the Laplace transform integral as we learned in the first lecture of this chapter. Let's replace xt by the delta function. The function is non-zero only at the origin. It's zero before and after that. Based on the sifting property that we learned in the elementary signals lecture, we just need to replace t by zero. Delta t at the origin is 1 and we get 1. So the Laplace transform of delta is 1. Now let's talk about rock. The delta function is non-zero only at the origin in the time domain. This means the signal has a finite duration. According to my lecture on golden rules, the rock is everywhere in this case as there is no pole to mess with a stability. Next signal is u of t. In the first lecture of this chapter, we already proved the Laplace transform of u of t is 1 over s. Now let's practice rock using golden rules. The Laplace transform has one pole at the origin. Let's plot it. As we learned in the last lecture, to find region of convergence, we need to draw a vertical line on the pole. This line shows a very strict boundary as rock cannot include any poles due to the stability issues. Rock can be either on the right side of the boundary or on, the, on its left. To decide which one is the correct rock, we need to look at the signal in the time domain. ut is 0 for t less than 0 and extends to infinity. So ut is clearly right-sided. Therefore, based on the golden rules from the previous lecture, rock is right-sided, i.e. on the right side of the pole, which mathematically can be expressed as real part of s, is greater than zero. Next signal is minus u minus t. The Laplace transform for this function is again 1 over s, and the proof is super simple and very similar to u of t. Please do it yourself to practice. Let's talk about rock. The first step is to find poles. There is only one pole at the origin. Here we go. Now, u minus t is basically non-zero for t less than zero. The minus here just flips the amplitude as we learned in the signal transformations lecture. The signal is left-sided as it starts from minus infinity and ends at zero. So the rock is left-sided, i.e. on the left side of the pole. Next signal. We already solved the Laplace transform integral for a signal very similar to this in the first lecture. So let's skip the Laplace transform and just practice rock using golden rules. Here there is one pole at s equal to minus a as plotted here. The vertical line indicates the boundary as rock cannot include any poles. So the rock is either on the left of the boundary or on its right. To find out, let's look at the signal in the time domain. This is an exponential function. If a is positive, 
This term is descending like this. If you don't know why, set t in the exponential function to minus infinity, 0, and infinity. The corresponding values are infinity, 1, and 0, which give you something like this with the exponential decay. On the other hand, if a is negative, we have an ascending behavior like this. Again, if you don't know why, set t to minus infinity, 0, and infinity, and you can easily see the trend. Now let's multiply the exponential function by u of t. As u of t is 0 for t less than 0, the exponential tail for the negative side for both cases will be gone after multiplication. Let me plot them again. As you can clearly see, both signals are non-zero from 0 to plus infinity. This implies the signal is right-sided in the time domain and therefore the rock must be right-sided, i.e. on the right side of the pole which can be mathematically expressed as real part of s greater than minus a. Next signal. Again, I already proved the Laplace transform for something very similar to this in the first lecture and I'm gonna skip it here. Let's just focus on the rock again. First step is to find poles for the Laplace transform expression. Here there is one pole at s equal to minus a as plotted here. This is our boundary. To decide on the rock, we need to consider the signal shape in the time domain. As was mentioned, the exponential term can be descending or ascending depending on the sign for a. Let's add u minus t to the game. u minus t is non-zero for t less than zero. So after multiplying the exponential term by u minus t, the exponential tail on the positive side will be gone. Let me plot them again. The negative sign just flips the signal around the x-axis. Here we go. In both cases, the function is non-zero from minus infinity to zero. This implies the signal in the time domain is left-sided. So, based on the golden rules, the rock must be left-sided, i.e. on the left side of the pole, which mathematically can be expressed as a real part of s, less than minus a. Next signal is cosine omega naught t u of t, where omega naught is a constant frequency. I want to prove the Laplace transform of this signal is this expression. The first term is a cosine function. Based on the Euler equation that we learned in the complex numbers lecture, cosine theta is basically a summation of two complex exponential functions. I'm going to use this beautiful equation and replace cosine function by this. The second term here is u of t. Let's separate it into two functions. To find the Laplace transform for the first term, we can simply use this pair. In this case, a is minus j omega naught, as we can write the power like this. Minus can be cancelled by minus, and it's basically the same thing, but this form is consistent with the table. Based on the pair from the table, here is the Laplace transform. Don't forget this coefficient. So multiply both sides by one half. Again, for the Laplace transform of the second term, we can use the table where a is j omega naught. Here we go. Multiply both sides by one half. Now let's add them up. The summation of both terms in the time domain results in the summation of Laplace transforms. Let's factor out one half. If we add these terms together, we get this. J omega naught is cancelled by minus J omega naught and we get 2s. 2 is also cancelled by 2. If we multiply the terms in the denominator, we get this. Again, these terms cancel out each other. J is the square root of minus 1, so J squared is basically minus 1 multiplied by the minus before the parentheses and here's what we get. This is basically the final answer for the Laplace transform. Now let's talk about rock. The first step is to find poles, which is where the denominator is equal to zero. Bring the omega naught squared to the other side and apply a square root. Here's what we get. Let's plot the poles on the Cartesian coordinate system. Obviously, the real part is zero, and here's the imaginary parts. So, these are the poles, and this is the border, or the boundary. To decide on the rock, 
we need to consider the signal shape in the time domain. The cosine function is pure oscillation from minus infinity to plus infinity. And here is u of t, which is zero for t less than zero. If we multiply both terms, the negative side becomes zero and we end up with a right-sided signal. So, based on the golden rules, the rock must be right-sided, i.e., on the right side of the poles, which can be mathematically expressed as real part of S, greater than zero. Done. The proof for the signal with sinusoidal function is very similar to cosine. Please do it yourself to practice. Now let's talk about the table of properties. If the Laplace transform of xt is xs, the Laplace transform of xt minus t naught is basically the same, just multiplied by this exponential term. Here, t naught is an arbitrary time shift. This property is called time domain shifting property. On the other hand, if we multiply xt by this function, where s naught is an arbitrary complex constant, the Laplace transform gets shifted by s naught. This is called Laplace domain shifting property. If we scale time by a, where a is a real and constant value, the amplitude of Laplace transform gets scaled by 1 over absolute value of a, and more importantly, the s variable gets scaled by 1 over a. This is so-called time domain or Laplace domain scaling property. If we apply derivative to xt, Laplace transform is multiplied by s. This is called time domain differentiation property. On the other hand, if we multiply xt by t in the time domain, the differentiation will be applied to xs. This is called Laplace domain differentiation. Next property is time domain convolution. If we have a convolution of x1 and x2 in the time domain, the Laplace transform is simply the product of the individual Laplace transforms. The last property is conjugation. The Laplace transform of xt conjugate is capital xt conjugate s conjugate. That's all you need to know from this table. I'm asking you one more time, please don't memorize this if you don't want to waste your time and go crazy. If you look at these properties carefully, you will immediately realize they are very, very similar to the ones that we saw in the Fourier transform tables lecture. And remember the connection between Laplace transform and Fourier transform, as was mentioned in the Laplace transform lecture. Basically, Laplace transform becomes Fourier transform on the imaginary axis, or if you can replace s by j omega. So, the proof for each property is very, very similar to the one that I did in the Fourier transform tables. Just to refresh your memory, let's review table of properties of Fourier transform together. The Fourier transform of xt is shown by xj omega. Please note that I use xj omega notation, not x omega. They are basically the same, but different styles of showing Fourier transform in reference books. XJ omega notation helps you see the connection between Laplace transform and Fourier transform, and that's why I use it in this chapter. Let's start with the time domain shifting property. The counterpart in the Fourier transform is this. It's clear that Fourier transform and Laplace transform are the same if you replace S by J omega. Let's go to Laplace domain shifting property. Here's the counterpart. Again, they are the same, just S and s naught are replaced by j omega and j omega naught. That's it. Next property is time domain or Laplace domain scaling property. Here is the Fourier transform counterpart, which is basically the same, just s is replaced by j omega. Next one is time domain differentiation, and here is the Fourier transform counterpart. s is just replaced by j omega. That's it. Next property is Laplace domain differentiation, and here is the counterpart. You might say, wait a second, they are not the same. Why here we have minus and here we have j? To show you that they are exactly the same, I'm going to multiply denominator and numerator by j. j can be cancelled by j, and I basically didn't do anything. Now let's replace j omega by s. As j is a square root of minus 1, j multiplied by j is basically minus 1. 
So we end up with the same thing. Next property is time domain convolution and here's the counterpart. And finally, here's the Fourier transform counterpart for conjugation property. You might want to say they are different again, but believe me, my friend, they are the same. Here we have conjugate and here we have minus. As you may remember, when you apply conjugate to a complex number, the imaginary part just becomes negative. So you can simply express minus j omega as j omega conjugate. So again, Fourier transform counterpart is very similar to Laplace transform and this is not surprising as they are the same on the imaginary axis. So to recap, all you need to do to travel from Laplace transform to Fourier transform table of properties is to replace s by j omega. That's it. In the next lecture, I'm going to solve lots of examples using Laplace transform tables and five golden rules for the region of convergence. Here's what I promise. By the end of next lecture, you are super powerful in Laplace domain and you can easily travel from time to Laplace domain in a matter of seconds. Thanks a lot for giving me your time and watching this lecture. Please don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next video.